हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू आर चैनल स्टूडेंट्स होम्योपैथी एंड लेस लर्न टुगेदर केन्स फिलोसॉफी इज वन ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट मैनिस्क्रिप्ट्स ऑफ होम्योपैथी अंडरस्टैंडिंग केन्स फिलोसॉफी इंक्रीजेस वन डेफ्थ एंड एक्यूमेन इन होम्योपैथी इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस लेक्चर थर्टी फोर ऑफ केन्स फिलोसॉफी दैट इज होम्योपैथिक एग्रावेशन डॉक्टर हैनीमन हैज मैंशन अबाउट द होम्योपैथिक एग्रावेशन अंडर अफरिज्म वन फिफ्टी फोर ऑफ ऑर्गन ऑफ मेडिसिन लाइक दिस If the antitype constructed from the list of symptoms of the most suitable medicine contain those peculiar uncommon singular and distinguishing that is characteristic symptoms which are to be met with the disease to be cured in the greatest number and in the greatest similarity this medicine is the most appropriate homeopathic specific remedy for this morbid strain the disease if it be not one of very long standing will generally be removed and extinguished by the first dose of it without any considerable disturbance so now kent emphasized on the last clause of this aphorism that is a disease that is of no very long standing ordinarily yields without any great degree of suffering to the first dose of this remedy that means while treating the acute cases we rarely observe homeopathic aggravation unless and otherwise the disease is of very severe degree or has reached the advanced pathological condition or tissue changes but if the disease is of a very grievous character that is has destruction of tissues sar homeopathic aggravation is seen with immense weakness too much sweating vomiting purging etc following the administration of homeopathic specific remedy so after the administration of remedy in an acute disease of grievous stage or condition homeopathic aggravation can be observed for many days whereas in a chronic disease of much progress or with marked ultimates or tissue changes it can be observed for many years the more advanced and deeper the case is and the more the tissue changes are there the more distressing and prolonged the homeopathic aggravation becomes some cases with advanced tissue changes like destruction of kidneys liver or lungs etc even cannot recover from the resulted aggravation whether it be an acute disease or a chronic one if there is no marked tissue changes or ultimates there will be no serious aggravation or sharp suffering only a slight exacerbation of symptoms will be there on the other hand serious structural changes produce much reaction or aggravation according to kent these aggravations are necessary for recovery in deep seated conditions with marked tissue changes like pyemia elimination must take place from the body that is diarrhea vomiting expectoration profuse urination etc as a process of house cleaning so that man's internal economy turns into order however note that such eliminations are not the direct effects of the medicine instead the dynamic homeopathic medicines induce the vital force so that it could turn the internal economy of man into order and then the vomiting or purging or sweating or anything else that is necessary for recovery of the patient may result thus dynamic homeopathic medicines don't have any direct physiological effect on human body on the other hand the crude drugs have direct physiological effects on our body like laxatives induce diarrhea emetics induce vomiting however by this they cannot produce cure here kent has given an example of long standing paralyzed limb according to him after administration of the homeopathic specific for it the patient may start feeling of tingling in that paralyzed limb as like creeping and uh, crawling of ants disturbing his sleep whole day and night but actually it is not a bad sign it indicates that a reaction has been set in that paralyzed limb and that the nerves are being stimulated similarly after administration of a curative remedy to a child who has gone for a stupor since a long time he may start screaming or twist and turn these reactions are necessary for bringing back the patient's economy into order 
we never should try just to relieve the symptoms of aggravation by prescribing any other remedy otherwise the case will get spoiled we must learn to identify which symptoms are reactions that is the symptoms necessary for cure and which symptoms need change of remedy if violent aggravation is seen after administration of homeopathic medicine then we should be sure that some deep seated pathology or advanced tissue changes are there however aggravation indicates that the economy of the patient is active that's why the patient is reacting very strongly only the strong vigorous constitutions can produce such aggravations on the other hand the feeble patient so very little or no reaction to a dose of most similar homeopathic medicine also in this patients we can find only few symptoms to be prescribed upon thus it becomes very difficult to select the most similar medicine for them going in this line kent has given an example suppose a patient is advancing towards the stage of conception but it will take years from now to reach that stage if he is not cured but if this expected violent symptoms of conception come soon after administration of most similar homeopathic medicine which we had expected to come years after but not now we should consider these symptoms as the symptoms of homeopathic aggravation but not of disease aggravation it is the drop disease added to the natural disease because the medicine is in similitude a medicine cannot produce those symptoms which are not included in its drug picture that's why kent said these symptoms belong to the medicine but not to the disease however homeopathic aggravation is seen in vigorous robust constitutions only it is not seen in patient with feeble reaction the more vigorous the constitution is the more the remedy brings about aggravation kent writes in his lesser writings under chapter 65 that is what shall we do when the law fails that the aggravation following administration of the remedy gives an estimation of vital reaction of man to the remedy however in in this positions homeopathic aggravation is seldom seen as they don't belong to any specific chronic miasm differently in over sensitive patients instead of homeopathic aggravation we observe exaggeration of symptoms of medicine these exaggeration are not the reaction but the symptoms of proving apart from this according to kent the weakly constitution especially those who possess a very narrow receding chain sunken eyes with senility marked in them also so this exaggeration of symptoms of medicine next kent had cited aphorism number 155 of organon which says i say without any degree of suffering because when a perfect homeopathic remedy acts upon the body it is nothing more than symptoms analogous to those of the disease laboring to surmount and annihilate this later by usurping their place that means according to hanneman in homeopathic aggravation there should be no suffering but in this point kent's opinion differs somehow kent says what hanneman has said is based on his own experience and it's just a matter of opinion that means kent disagrees with hanneman in this point next kent has discussed about homeopathic aggravation in acute disease according to him if within a few minutes after administration of homeopathic dose slight aggravation of symptoms is seen repetition should not be thought of however there are some cases where repetition is also necessary though there is no clear cut guideline regarding it according to kent in cases of continuous fevers like typhoid repetition is necessary but only until the slightest aggravation is observed after this no further repetition should be made anyway this repetition is applicable in cases of robust and vigorous constitutions only 
In delicate and feeble patients, any repetition should be avoided. On the other hand, in remittent fevers, where reaction comes within a few hours, repetition is not necessary. Next, Kent talks about aphorism number 158, which states that this trifling homeopathic aggravation of the malady during the first few hours, the happy omen which announces that the acute disease will soon be cured and that it will, for the most part, yield to a first dose. Kent explains it like this. According to him, a natural disease can eradicate another natural disease by being superior in strength than the latter. But before that, it must be similar to the latter. Now, when the disease of superior strength is of a similar character, it must intensify the existing symptoms, that is, produce slight aggravation. Thus, in an acute disease, when slight aggravation is produced, repetition is seldom needed. One dose of medicine is sufficient for its cure. Slight aggravation of symptoms is always a welcoming sign. But if while treating an acute disease no homeopathic aggravation is seen, yet the patient is improving, then it infers that the plane of attenuation of medicine does not match to the plane of susceptibility of the patient. The improvement will cease soon. Now, in this situation, another dose of medicine is necessary. If a homeopathic dose cannot produce homeopathic aggravation in a good vigorous constitution, then it is not perfectly similar to the case. It is a partially similar remedy. A partially similar remedy cannot produce homeopathic aggravation. Also, singly it is incapable of curing a case of disease. In order to cure a case, a partially similar medicine must follow few other partially similar medicines one after another. The ordinary physicians who are not very careful while prescribing treat their patients like this. You can find the same in Stuart Close philosophy under chapter 7 like this. The bungler may zigzag his patient along through a protracted illness and finally get him well where an expert would cure him by the straight route with a single remedy in half of the time. Now, though a partially similar medicine is unable to produce any aggravation, oversensitive patients are exception to it. Oversensitive patients are aggravated even by the partially similar medicine because we have already discussed earlier that they are capable of proving every medicine. However, by this, they produce medicinal aggravation but not homeopathic aggravation. Under aphorism 159 of 4th edition of uh, organ Hanneman has mentioned like this, the smaller the dose of the homeopathic remedy, the slighter the apparent aggravation of the disease and it is proportionately of shorter duration. According to Kent, here smaller dose means attenuated or potentized medicine. The more the drug departs from crudeness, the smaller the dose becomes. Now, about what Hanneman said, that is, smaller the dose of the homeopathic remedy, the slighter the apparent aggravation of the disease and it is proportionately of shorter duration. Kent explains that Hanneman had written this during the time when he was using lower potencies only, that is up to 30th or occasionally 60th. And thus, he had no experience of the violent aggravation that are seen after administration of the very highest potency like 50M or same. In simple words, Kent wants to say that, though by increasing the potency, the aggravation becomes slighter and shorter than that are produced by the crude drugs. The highest potencies like 50M and CM produce tremendous turmoil. Now, in 5th edition, Hanneman rewrote the same aphorism, that is aphorism number 159, like this. The smaller the dose of the homeopathic remedy is, so much the slighter and shorter is the apparent increase of the disease during the first hours. Again, in 6th edition of the same, 
he rewrote like this the smaller the dose of the homeopathic remedy is in the treatment of acute disease so much the slighter and shorter is the apparent increase of the disease during the first hours that means in acute diseases the homeopathic aggravation is seen during the first hours and the smaller is the dose the slighter and the shorter is the homeopathic aggravation according to kent the cruder is the drug the longer is the aggravation and the smaller or the more attenuated is the dose the shorter is the aggravation then he writes that the third fourth and sixth potencies are dangerous potencies and produce violent aggravation these poisonous or crude doses produce medicinal aggravation but not homeopathic aggravation so to avoid poisonous dose we should use the higher potencies according to hanneman the 30th potency produce slight and short aggravation however note that unnecessary repetition of the higher potencies may produce medicinal aggravation that is the symptoms of proving now kent explains what homeopathic aggravation is according to him it is a state of apparent aggravation of disease produced by addition of similar medicinal disease to the natural disease in homeopathic aggravation despite the symptoms get intensified the patient says that in some way or the other he feels better now the homeopathic aggravation is produced only in those cases where the medicine is very similar to the disease a partially similar medicine cannot produce homeopathic aggravation however due to its similarity to a part of a totality it can cure a case but for this it has to be followed by two or three more such partially similar remedies the explanation of it is that during his disease state the patient becomes very sensitive to the very similar medicine so that cure could be brought about thus the medicinal disease is added to the natural disease and in this way the symptoms of natural disease are intensified the aggravations which are produced by the smaller doses that is by the higher attenuations differ from those which are produced by the crude drugs the crude or poisonous doses aggravate the disease itself they do not produce homeopathic aggravation on the other hand the higher attenuations produce decisive actions they intensify the characteristic symptoms only the disease itself is not aggravated by this and after all the patient feels better by it next kent writes that then he was being criticized that he was departing from hanneman's principles his use of higher potencies like 50 mm and cm could not get accepted by many during the time because hanneman had advocated the 30th potency according to kent hanneman has once said that the 30th potency was sufficiently high and sufficiently low now Kent has also given clarification for this controversy uh, referring to aphorism number 279 of organon which says it has been fully proved by pure experiments that when a disease does not evidently depend upon the impaired state of an important organ the dose of the homeopathic remedy can never be sufficiently small so as to be inferior to the power of natural disease which it can at least partially extinguish and cure provided it be capable of producing only a small increase of symptom immediately after it is being administered that means a medicine that possesses curative property or medicinal power will definitely produce homeopathic aggravation if similitude is present in other words production of homeopathic aggravation after administration of a remedy is the proof that the remedy possesses curative property now whether we administer 200 potency or 1m 10m 50m and cm each of them will produce homeopathic aggravation that means all these homeopathic potencies from higher to highest possesses medicinal property we cannot say that the higher attenuation are too small to cure or at least partially extinguish a disease however if 
there will be any potency which will be so higher in degree that it will produce no aggravation then we can say that no medicinal power is left in it going in this line kent writes kentians never claim that every potency will suit everybody the potency or attenuation of the medicine have to match the state or attenuation or the susceptibility of the patient however the correctness of potency will be verified only after it will able to produce homeopathic aggravation in the most positive and definite manner according to kent the kentians has acted according to the hanimans principle they didn't deviate from it he mentioned aphorism number 280 of organon supporting his words which is as follows this incontrovertible axiom founded upon experience will serve as a rule by which the doses of all homeopathic medicines without exception are to be attenuated to such a degree that after being introduced into the body they shall merely produce an almost insensible aggravation of the disease it is of little importance whether the attenuation goes so far as to appear almost impossible to ordinary physicians which minds fit on no other ideas but what are gross and material all these arguments and vain assertions will be of little avail when opposed to the doctrines of unerring experience he also mentioned footnote 1 of aphorism 249 that is all experience teaches us that scarcely any homeopathic medicine can be prepared in 2 minute a dose to produce perceptible benefit in a disease to which it is adapted hence it would be an improper and an injurious practice when the medicine produces no good effect or an inconsiderable aggravation of the symptoms after the manner of old school to repeat or increase the dose under the idea that it cannot prove serviceable on account of its minuteness it means till now no such medicine has been made so small that despite being the most similar to a case of disease it will produce no perceptible benefit now if a medicine is not producing any benefit then it does not fit to the case and any repetition of the same will result in no benefit moreover may produce disease aggravation The smallness of potentized medicine cannot be measured by the measures which are the units of measurement for poisoners or crude doses. The doses of homeopathic potencies can only be measured by its capability of producing slight aggravation of symptoms. According to Kent, Hahnemann does not limit attenuation, but he practically teaches it is unlimited, and the end has never been found. next kent has criticized the modern homeopaths who consider that the dose of homeopathic medicine as advocated by hanneman is too small to cure by potentizing the homeopathic potency never become so small that it cannot produce cure next kent says increasing the dose never makes a medicine more homeopathic the similarity of symptoms is to be considered first dose is secondary however practically saying there is no fixed rule regarding the selection of potency still ken has suggested of few practical tips regarding this from his own experience he says we should start from 30th but not below this whether it is an acute case or a chronic however there is no higher limit we should follow up the series of degrees in medicine and experience higher and higher potencies lastly kent says if there is truth in mind the experience will be true a man who does not know what truth is is cannot be trusted of his experience so let's quickly summarize this homeopathic aggravation is rarely seen in acute cases unless the disease is of very severe degree or has advanced tissue changes in acute cases of very grievous character sharp aggravations are absorbed after administration of homeopathic specific remedy acute diseases of grievous stage or condition show aggravations for many days whereas 
chronic diseases with marked alternates or tissue changes so aggravation for many years homeopathic aggravation is necessary for recovery its degree and duration is directly proportional to the extent of severity of disease or advancement of tissue changes in some cases with advanced tissue changes like destruction of vital organs one may even unable to recover from this homeopathic aggravation in deep seated conditions with marked tissue changes elimination in the form of diarrhea vomiting expectoration profuse urination etc must take place from the body as a process of house cleaning to turn man's internal economy into order crude drugs have direct physiological effects on our body whereas dynamic homeopathic medicines act indirectly by inducing the vital force to do whatever is necessary to turn man's economy into order only the strong vigorous constitutions can produce homeopathic aggravation feeble patients show very little or no reaction to a dose of most similar homeopathic medicine if after prescribing the most similar homeopathic remedy we observe some violent symptoms those were expected to be appeared as a result of disease progression only after long period of time but not now this should be considered as symptoms of homeopathic aggravation but not disease aggravation homeopathic aggravation is seen in vigorous robust constitutions only it is not seen in feeble constitutions in over sensitive patients instead of homeopathic aggravation we observed exaggeration of symptoms of medicine repetition is necessary in continuous fevers like typhoid but not in remittent fevers repetition is only applicable in robust and vigorous constitutions in delicate and feeble patients it should be avoided when slight aggravation is produced in acute disease repetition is seldom needed partially similar remedy cannot finish a case singly it must follow multiple such partially similar remedies one after another to cure the case a partially similar remedy cannot produce homeopathic aggravation in an acute disease if the patient is improving without producing homeopathic aggravation then the improvement will cease soon smaller dose means attenuated or potentized medicine the more the drug departs from crudeness the smaller the dose becomes the cruder is the drug the longer is the aggravation and the smaller is the dose the shorter is the aggravation unnecessary repetitions of the higher potencies also produce medicinal aggravation that is the symptoms of proving in homeopathic aggravation despite the symptoms get intensified the patient says that in some way or the other he feels better the crude or poisonous doses aggravate the disease itself whereas higher attenuations produce homeopathic aggravation a medicine that possesses medicinal power will definitely produce homeopathic aggravation if there is similitude each and every potency will not suit to each and every one the potency of medicine have to match the state or attenuation or the susceptibility of the patient the doses of homeopathic potencies can only be measured by its capability of producing homeopathic aggravation by potentizing the homeopathic potency never become so small that it cannot produce cure according to kent we should start from 30th potency whether it is an acute case or chronic however there is no higher limit so that's all for this video if you have not yet subscribed to our channel students homeopathy please subscribe it now and also click on the bell icon and select all so that you will not miss any of our informative educational and interesting videos on homeopathy please provide your valuable feedback in the comment section also we will love to answer your queries on this topic thank you for watching